Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. Uh, today, we're going to talk a bit about the transitioning from the resistance to a movement and how that can happen, and some of the players involved in that. And uh, for that conversation, we're going to have Mr. David Mullenix with us. Uh, David is uh, organizer of Our Hawaii, I'm sorry, Our Revolution Hawaii, and we're going to learn a bit about that. We're going to learn a bit about what David has been up to, and then we're going to talk about this transition process and some of the things that go on with that. So hopefully we all learn a little bit. Uh, from that, I'm looking forward to learning myself. So thank you for joining us again, and thank you, David, for joining us. Thank you for having me, Carl. Great to have you on the show. Really so, appreciate it. Um, for starters, tell us a bit about yourself, what you've been up to, and what has sort of led you to this point of organizer role. Wow, that's an interesting question. <laughs> I've been doing it for a long time. Uh, I was a kid in the 60s. Uh, I really got, like, an, I thought Martin Luther King was just incredible human being, and I, I walked for civil rights. I protested the war in Vietnam, and, uh, and I just wanted that to be my life, you know, organizing, making yeah. things better. Uh, I had to go through college and have some federal businesses of my own, and eventually came around to organizing, and I got, uh, started organizing with a group called Alliance for Survival in the Los Angeles area. We were okay. the main organizers for the anti-nuclear movement nuclear power, nuclear weapons. Uh, we got trained by a guy named Fred Ross. Do you know who Fred Ross is? I do not know Fred Ross. Fred Ross was the uh, an organizer from the union organizers in the 1930s. And uh, he had this idea that the farm workers should be organized. And so he went looking for someone to help him do that. And everyone said, this kid, Cesar Chavez, just lives down the road. Mm -hmm. You should talk to Cesar. So he trained Caesar and, and founded the uh, Farm Workers uh, Union. Yeah. Wow. So he trained us uh, on, uh, on basic organizing. And I've been organizing uh, you know, ever since. Um, I worked here in, in Hawaii. I uh, was the first executive director for Habitat for Humanity, building houses for the homeless. Okay. And uh, we were- want more of those. We do. Uh, That's a different show. Affordable We're housing. Going <laughs> Talk about what's it's not wrong. just affordable housing. It's it's low income housing. It's it's housing that the people can afford, not affordable housing. Yes, and and all this stuff about homeless. It's a whole this different is, story. Yeah, but you know, it's easy solvable. We got the highest rents and the lowest pay in the country. Yeah, That's it's easy to solve. Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, so I I. I, would, I I was the first executive director for Habitat and built a lot of houses here. Uh, and, uh, and then, um, not sure where, anyway, we had the, the, the Occupy movement came yeah, along. Yes, and yes. Uh, we founded the Occupy camp at uh, Thomas Square. We okay. were there for yeah, two yeah. full years. You were there with Sam Mitchell? Yeah, oh, yeah. Sam's yeah, yeah. down there every Sunday. We yeah. feed the homeless with Sam. That's right. Yeah, no, Sam is a great human being. So, uh, yeah, we were there for two, the longest encampment in the, in the country. Went there originally about the banks, and we got... Uh, involved in a homeless issue just because the homeless kept showing up. Because it became relevant. It became, well, it was in front of you. It was on top of you. Yeah, we walked right into it, right. right. Yeah, that wasn't what we were there for, but, you know, uh, it was safe for them. There was no drugs, no alcohol. Yeah. The police weren't harassing them. Uh, they got good food. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we were there for two, and we got two lawsuits against the city, which we actually prevailed in, but the city ignores the fact that we prevailed mm -hmm. and keeps uh, harassing the homeless here in in Honolulu, it's yeah. really uh, shanda. It's 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 a travesty of how we treat the homeless here in Hawaii. Um, yeah, Seventy percent at work, you know. Yeah, Fifty yeah. percent are Native Hawaiian. Thirty percent are children, and they're wow. treated like they're mainland alcoholics and drug addicts, and it's absolutely false. So, well, I want to invite you back to yeah. talk about that. Right. And have an entire show about <laughs> that. So let's okay. take this. Let's take this back to this idea of right. resistance to movement. So the next thing up with then would be the organizing for the Sanders campaign. Uh, okay, we so the founders of that about a year ago, a little over a year ago. Yeah, and we get seventy percent of the people in the state of Hawaii to vote for Bernie Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, recently we've been involved with um, 350.org and um, um, the pipeline in North Dakota. In North Dakota, Dapple. Yeah, yeah, Dapple. So we got First Hawaiian Bank to divest. Right. Two, two million dollars divested for First Hawaiian Bank, who was supporting uh, right. the bank. So that was a great uh, movement. So we have a lot of things happening here in the state of Hawaii. A lot of people are involved, a lot of different issues. And since uh, Trump got elected, uh, there's a, 
people just coming out of the woodwork. They're like freaking out. People are looking oh my for God. how they can be involved, how there's, they can get engaged, what can they do. They're right? scared. They're yeah, afraid. Everyone, there's, and there's actually, a lot of people are scared, yeah. but the, the thing that I think worries some of us is how the, the Trump supporters yeah. are not only not scared, yeah. they're, they're giddy. That's the part that is most worrisome. We're seeing blatant racism. They're and not afraid to be racist now. No, not, yeah. a, not at all. Blatant racism. Yeah. And the hate crimes just seem to be, I, I don't, it's, it's like an acceptable thing almost. Right. And how some of that is, is occurring. Right. Uh, the, what, what Sessions is doing in rolling th the law back to the 80s, to the right. 1980s, and all these things 1950s. that are going on. In some ways, 1950s. And, yeah. and, in, and you know, some of the research that I've been doing it, what what the GOP agenda right now is seems to be rolling everything back to the Hoover era, right? To just before and what led to the Great Depression, right? Exactly. So h why is that a good idea? And that, so that's what Not that's what idea. we're scared of. So right. that, that right. includes everything from the economy right. to civil rights and social rights. Now right. l let me before we jump into this, I want to hear this. Yeah, you were. You commented already that you were part of, and you marched in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. How do you feel right now knowing that you have to do it again? Well, I never stopped. I mean, uh, a lot. Of, it's hard to stay in the movement because you have to get a job, raise a family. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, that's what I wanted to do, so I just figured that out. Okay. So I've gotten jobs where either I was actually working in the movement uh, like with, you know, with uh, um, Habit, not Habitat, but um, you know, Alliance for Survival or, or other organizations. Or I was doing something that's comparable, like Habitat for Humanity building, doing something socially. Doing something. So I, that was, I made my career doing that. Okay, so, so, so I haven't really you stopped. You found one way or another to continue, yes. not necessarily marching, but do, then taking that from, that's, and that's the whole topic of this conversation. Right. How do you go from a resistance into a movement? Right. And what you're saying is yeah. you've sort of, made your career about saying we're against this so now let's do something about it because that's yes. the movement part right well it's like we, we can do something we can do something we all have a responsibility to make the world a better place yeah. that's the way i see it we were born with the responsibility to make the world when you leave here it should be better than when you when you came in you shouldn't just trash it out and say well great party i'm <laughs> out the door <laughs> you guys clean up the mess that's what basically the oligarchy is doing but yeah. for us, you know, regular citizens, we have to look for the future for our children, for our grandchildren, for the environment. And, and we so have to, we, I have to wonder why, in just taking that for a moment, I have to wonder why you know, no one thinks they're the bad guy. Everyone thinks they're the good guy. So the Republicans who are on that side, who are trying to take away health care from all these millions of people, who are trying to roll back all of these regulations, who are trying to recreate this old world scenario of how this country or how this globe works, they think they're doing the right thing. So, well, <laughs> their their view is if you're making money, you're doing the right thing. It's like an attorney that you know, if he wins the case, even though you were innocent, then well, if I won, I must have been right. So, you know, uh, something yeah. the guy must have been guilty of something. Hmm. You know, so that's kind of the attitude that, and it's really more self-involved. If it's good for me, they. They're really psychopaths and sociopaths. They don't care about anyone else. They don't no, care if people die. That's the, that's the Ayn Randian individualism. Yes. It's about me and I take care of myself and yes. as long as I'm benefiting and if everyone is doing the exact same thing, right. looking after only themselves, right. then we'll all be fine because everyone is taking care of themselves. Right, which is, which is a fallacy. It's, it's, it's not how society works. It's, that's not how human beings are, are designed to be. You know, we have what we call families. You know. <laughs> families, and that and family, family has a community, and that right. community is connected to other communities, right. and we rely on each other, right. and it's not a matter, one of the things going back to what they're trying to do is rolling this stuff back is, yeah. is, is since Reagan, when they really started this back, yes. the whole, this whole idea of the trickle-down supply-side economics. Right. That's what. That's one of the big pieces that failed us in the 20s. Mm. That led to the depression right. is overproduction, right? Yeah. So anyway, okay. So it's not meat stocking. I want to hear from you. Let's go transition back to this thought. So okay, tell me your thoughts. Now you've gone through this once, where you you marched. You were you were inspired and you marched, and then you decided to take that and create a career out of it. That's where it went from march to movement a bit. Yeah. Tell us about 
that thought process and what was going on then and how that compares to now? Well, see, nothing really ever changed. I mean, uh, you know, after the 70s, we had Reagan, and that was, we were fighting him. We had wars, and illegal wars in Central America, genocidal wars in Central America. The Iran-Contra scandal, he was giving weapons of mass destruction, right? Uh, he created that whole, that whole problem. They were, they were bringing drugs into the United States. CIA was bringing drugs into the United States. So there was a lot to be organizing against in, in, in the nuclear arms race. Um, and then along came, uh, Clinton wasn't any better. He gave us NAFTA. We had to fight NAFTA. Uh, he got rid of uh, welfare. I mean, the reason we've got all these people on the street now is because of supposedly progressive Democrat um, Clinton. He wasn't a progressive at all. Well, so, so he, so they, we had to fight that. So they, we were, it's been ongoing battles. Sure. The whole time. Part, really of, part of the people on the streets, though, are one of the things that Reagan did, and yeah. correct, correct me because I, I may right. have this off, but one of the things that, that I recall that Reagan did was he changed the rules with regards to, um, to mental health. Yes. And all of the people who were in a facility, a mental health uh, facility, because right. they needed care, he basically turned them all out. Yes. And, right. and therefore, as we go from city to city, yeah. town to town in some cases, you've got a percentage of the homeless who are in desperate need of mental health care. And, and a lot of them are vets with PTSD. And, and it's, it's it, another, it, it's a, people wearing their, oh, I wear my ribbon for, for the military. Yet you're like looking down on these homeless vets that you don't know are vets, yeah. you know? And, you, and you're acting like they're some kind of terrible human being. So, but your big, bigger question is, how do we go from, you know, resistance to building a movement, to and because and, yeah. and, we, you and I can talk about some all kinds things. of stuff forever. Yeah, <laughs> we could be, and I don't want to <laughs> lose up all your show of like, wow, what I did back then. Um, but the, I think that we can. The things have changed. Definitely in the '60s, we had a momentum, and it had a lot to do with civil rights. You know, the the the, the black community was like, hey, we have a right to vote. We have a right to eat where we want to eat. And then uh, came along the Vietnam War, and we were very motivated as teenagers not to go to Vietnam and kill innocent people or being blown up ourselves. So all the students in the country were pretty much aligned against the government. We were on the edge of revolution. And um, they realized it. And they, they really got scared. They're like, oh my god, they could overthrow. So we had Bobby Kennedy and, we, you know, and so and they assassinated him. Yeah. We had Martin Luther King and then they assassinated him. They had, we had um, uh, Malcolm X and they assassinated him. So all of our leaders, yeah, they assassinated all our leaders because that was the new era. That was, you know, the group that was going to take over. And that scared the heck out of them. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that, I think I got a track. But it, That's right. We, we have to take a break right now anyway. Yes. So right. we'll come back and we'll hone in on our revolution, our revolution Hawaii, right. and how that is working today. So, yes. Uh, thank you again for joining us. This is Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, Politics in Hawaii series. Thanks again to our guest today, Mr. David Mullenix, organizer of Our Revolution Hawaii. And uh, we'll be back in one minute. Thank you. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Movers, Shakers, and Reformers Politics in Hawaii series. I'm your host, Carl Campagna. And once again, welcome uh, to the show, Mr. David Mullenix. Yes. Again, organizer uh, of for having our Revolution Hawaii. So, yeah. uh, all right, so let's get to, let's get, the, the, we want to understand. Yeah. From a resistance movement, and by resistance, we're talking about the resistance to Donald Trump and the Republican agenda at the moment that seems in many cases to many of us diabolical, not just 
we oppose it, but it seems like awful and horrendous. So there was a huge, and the biggest story to me of this, of 2017 is not Trump, it's the resistance. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the biggest story because it's been working. Right. So the resistance has been there, standing up and fighting against and pushing back and saying, no, we don't want this, no, we don't want this, and making all of those phone calls to all of the legislators and challenging them and doing everything we can to suppress that, what we consider to be a diabolical agenda. Right. How do we take that and turn it into a movement? How do we say we've got all this energy, how do we now turn that into a movement that encompasses more people that creates, I guess, the opportunity ultimately for us to make the changes we need in 2018 and 2020? Because that's the goal, right? Yeah. So what are some of your thoughts on, on that? Well, uh, like I said, in the 60s, we, we were motivated by war and by civil rights. Now we're motivated by something much larger and it's much bigger than Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a blip on the, on, uh, on the, uh, on the issue. What, the problem is it's systemic. It's the capitalist system itself. It is um, looking at everything as a resource, privatizing everything just for the benefit of making money, where you're willing to like, you know, destroy the environment, you're willing to destroy your, your children's future, you're willing not to educate children, you're willing to impoverish people. You, you know, that's the bigger issue, and that's what the millennials see, yeah. and that's why, so one of the big drivers right now is climate change. We are on the edge of the extinction of human life on this planet. The, the problem with a lot of that, though, is, and I hear all of that, and yeah. I am 100% behind all of that. Yeah. The problem is, for most people, that has nothing to do with their household economics and how they're going to eat today. Right. No, it doesn't. That, it's true. The climate so change. So that's what they're voting for. So that's what, when yes. the Republicans come back and say, yes. no, 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 we don't want to talk about that stuff because all that's going to do yes. is make your life more expensive. Yes. Go our way and your life will be less expensive right. is what they tell them and they believe them. You've got two groups you're talking about here. You're yeah. talking about regular folks who've been doing this for a long time and you've got the new generation coming in who can see climate change means the end of their opportunity. And so they are really freaked out about climate change. They're very much involved in that. $15 wage, they're very much concerned about that. They're concerned about the fact that they are going to be in debt for the rest of their life because they went to college. And they may never, ever, right. ever pay it off. I'm still paying off my school debt. Yeah, so, yeah. right. So I don't, what I'm trying to say is to you is, so all the motivators are there. You know? so, okay. and, it, and it's much bigger than Donald Trump. Yeah, you know, there, there's two groups that I, that I work with. I, I appreciate them. I, I'm really glad they got involved. They jumped in. They're very excited. And, they, and their main goal is to impeach Donald Trump. And I was like, well, then what? You yeah. get Pence, who the same guys who are telling Trump what to do are telling Pence what to do. So right. changing presidents yeah. isn't going to change a thing. And it's the problem the with that would be problem. with Pence as president, he yeah. knows how to operate and he'd stay right. on Twitter. Right. He'd, he'd be more he'd, dangerous, actually. He'd be, he'd be friendlier. You know, it's yeah. like having a Democrat pretending to be a Republican in office, which yeah. we've had the last couple of times, yeah. who's putting forth the Republican agenda. So that president's very sweet and nice. You know, it's like, oh, geez, the Dakota Access Pipeline, I'm against that. Why he okayed 200 pipelines across the country, yeah. time, who expanded using fossil fuels. So it's a systemic problem. It's much bigger than that. And that's what the young people see, and that's why they're so, so that's motivated. This, that's this corporatist agenda thing yes. uh, that gets into so, the, so, the both sides of the conversation. Right. So, so, what, what, what's, so it's the, everyone's in the street now. It doesn't matter whether, like, I'm against Trump or whether I'm for climate change or I want to do something about LGBT, they're so, excited and they want to do something. So what's the difference, though? We've got all these people who are up in arms who, yeah. are, who are, are for a cause, right. whether it's to address climate change right. or the economic concerns or civil rights issues that are coming back again that right. we have to deal with again. Yes. There are a number of people who, we all have a cause, and there's dozens of groups out there yes. that all have their own version or their own perspective on that cause. Yes. Is that the movement? Or does the movement itself need to be more cohesive? Well, what, well, we started. We we met, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Now we say, you know, it's like we. I just had to, this came to me. It's like you know, we need to move from resistance to building a movement. And because it's all there, we have so many people now. And it hasn't been like this since the '60s and the '70s. There's so many people now who want to do something. They're desperate to do something. The first part you have to do is educate them to understand that. Taking Trump out won't change anything. You've got to do the next step, yeah. you know. And that's like 
We need to get progressives to run for office here in the state of Hawaii. Thank God for uh, uh, HAPA. You know, they they are teaching people how to run for office, how to get progressives into office. So we need we need to get people who are doing the sign waving to think about well, maybe you should run for office, or maybe you should support somebody running for office, or maybe you should go down to a city council meeting and testify. You know, getting them to take the next step. So that's why I tell people: no matter what you're doing, waving signs, making phone calls do one more thing. It doesn't matter okay. what that one more thing is. So that transitions us into, uh, into the movement is taking action. Yes. Doing the next step. Yes. So that's collecting as much you know, uh, information, get, getting people's emails, phone numbers. I tell people, you know what, join a group. I don't care what group you join. Join any group because the groups right now are working for your betterment, whether it's Sierra Club, you know, uh, or 350.org. Uh, it doesn't matter what group you join. Yeah. If that's our, the issue, our revolution, our revolution. Or, or women's march, they're all yes. everybody's. So, one of the things that needs to be done, and this is my thought to add to this, and and I know there's been conversation about this, is how do we make sure that we're not competing or against each other, stepping on each other's toes? How do we make sure that all these different groups that have their perspective on it are collaborating? How do we make that happen? Well. Uh, like I told the people at our first meeting, I've never built a movement before. So, you know, uh, I know that it can be done because I've lived through it. But um, so we're kind of going piece by piece. So we first met and we had about we met 18 organizations show up. So that was pretty good first meeting. Excellent. And I know we're going to have a lot more next time. Yeah. And it doesn't matter uh, if we have two or three groups or three or four groups. If one group wants to focus just on the economy, Great. Another group wants to focus just on the environment. Fantastic. Another one wants to focus on immigration. Yes, and, but yeah. we all agree to work together on the bigger issues. So that's so what I think. Maybe it is. a progressive candidate running that we all say, you know what, this guy. I think guy. it's a combination. Yeah. I think it's 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 looking at all of it and saying, right. okay, uh, the the, the com what are the common goals that right. all of these groups have? They all have a, a common goal of well, we want to understand better and have more accountability in one way or another. Right. We want to make sure that you know what we're getting new people, right. not just engaged in the process of the movement, but running for office. Right. And maybe there are some seats that we need to start looking at, well, how do we flip them and how do we do that and how do we work together? So I think it's a combination of pieces, getting engaged, getting involved, learning how the system works, how you can participate right. and, and how you can step up yes. in, in, in another way. Right. And, we, and we're seeing this through um, locally, through the state legislature. All right. Complete Democratic Party legislature could not pass the Democratic Party agenda yeah. because of money in politics, because of the oligarchs, because of the capitalist guys yeah. who just want to make money. Those guys are on the take, man. They, it's legal bribery now because of Citizens United. They can legally bribe, they can buy them. Carl, you want to be senator of Hawaii? Great. I'm a billionaire. I am going to like put you in office and I'll just... But I expect it. you to do this and this and this. And, and that's this what you're going to do. And that's what's going on in our Congress. And that's what's going on in our state legislature. And that's what's going on in our city council. So how, so we, that's, so how do we combat that? How do we combat that? Because uh, that was one of the challenges. And, and I, I, I know that uh, President Clinton had his issues. I know President Obama had his issues. Uh, but what Clinton did, Clinton invited the corporate money. Yes. He, and he, it, he corrupted the Democratic Party. He was the one who brought, because it was a, yes. primarily a grassroots. Yes. But what he saw was three Republican uh, uh, administrations in a row uh, with Clinton, and then before that, Carter for a minute, and mm -hmm. then Republicans. So mm -hmm. what he saw was, well, we need to make a change. We need more money. So he made the decision yeah. that we're going to invite the corporate money and to give us more money so we can actually be more competitive. Right. That was the strategy. Well, the end goal is here we are now 25 years later going, yeah. uh, this isn't what we intended, right? Right. The Democratic Party is now the Republican Party. How do we put the sausage back in the casing? Well, <laughs> it's happening. It, it, the revolution, I mean, the burners all across the country, uh, they got also this uh, Dem Enter started uh, Dem -enter, yeah. to get all the progressives to join a Democratic Party. And, yeah. and they have been fighting. They've been fighting all across the country to get in power, but the corporate Democrats are also fighting very hard to stay in power, yeah. even though they just lost a thousand elections, right? Yeah. And 14 million people have left the Democratic Party since this last election. So 
the Democratic Party is not growing. It's dying on the vine. So basically the old guard corporate Democrats are on the Titanic right now, moving the deck chairs around, you know, as the ship's going down. And, and, and they are preventing the people who could say, hey, we've got lifeboats right here, or we can patch the hole, you know? So all of the, the millennials across the country who, 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 who watched as the DNC stole the primary and gave it to Hillary Clinton, they watched it go down. They saw how illegal it was. And, the, and now they have a lawsuit right now, and the DNC yeah. is acknowledging, yes, we didn't do it fairly, but we have a right to do, we can do whatever we want. We don't have to listen to our voters. So that kind is not inviting you know, the young people into the Democratic Party. So most people now are not Democrats, right. are not Republicans. If Bernie Sanders today started his own party, he would be the next president of the United States because most people would join his party. Former Republicans, former Democrats. There will be, yeah, that's one of the concerns. That's one of the concerns yes. is, is there's, there has not been a viable third party in this country. There has not been that opportunity. Right. And what we have to try to consider is if we split up and yeah. we kind of are split, and in my opinion, we, are right now, yes. we need to get back together because yeah. I understand the Clinton Bernie thing, but you know what? That is not helping us. Maintaining that is not helping us. Finding a way to come together and say, okay, fine, that was last year. Going forward, we have to have a better approach, a more cohesive approach. Right. Right? So that we, so that's the movement is what are our common goals? Right. What do we want to achieve? At the very least, we need to start putting the fires out. Right. So that we can try to move forward. Right. It, it seems to me. Yeah. But see, the burners aren't the one that are the problem. The, no, I, the, the, nobody, nobody, nobody thinks. Nobody thinks they're the problem. The, the corporate Democrats are not letting them have any seats. We're not going to let you have any power at all. So that's the problem. They're not letting the millennials in. They're not letting uh, progressives in to the party to ha take any power. And so since yeah. they're not letting them into p positions of power, well, there's also where are they going to go? Let me divide this up a little bit. Yeah. There's a difference between the party yeah. and the elected officials. Yes. There is a difference. Yes. And I think that's an important distinction that most yes. people don't actually quite understand. Right. Is the party itself, certainly in Hawaii, yeah. the party itself has its own people and its own agenda and its yeah. own platform and its own way of trying to do things yes. that has been disconnected yes. from what the actual elected officials in this state have been doing. Right. And therefore, yeah, when we look at this, wait a minute, the Democratic Party platform says we should be doing these things. Yeah. And we look at the legislature and say, wait a minute, this session, you didn't do any of that when you right. had the opportunity. Why? Right. Right. Well, that's because, uh, one reason why, at the yeah. very least. One reason is that platform was not put together in collaboration with yeah. any of those elected officials. That's one challenge. Yeah. The other challenge is, well, it's then you, the corporate interests who are involved in this whole thing, and right. they don't want to deal with any of that stuff right. as well. So, so part of the movement needs to be how we address and connect, how, how we take the common goals of the people yeah. and how we connect and address that to what our elected officials are doing yeah. and why they're doing it and how. That, that, that's, so that's really, so that's when you're saying get engaged and take it to the next level. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. Right. What is it that's your cause that is going to make you step up? Right. I think people have to realize that no politician ever changed anything. Right. It was the people always who motivated and made the change happen. And that's exactly true. And it's the people. Right. So we are at the end of our show oh, already. Okay. So it just happens really quickly. Wow. So <laughs> thank you, David, for joining us. Mr. David yeah. Molinex. Thank you. Organizer of our, whole, our Revolution Hawaii. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Think Tech Hawaii, movers, shakers, and reformers. Thanks to the, the crew and everyone involved in Think Tech. We will see you next week. Happy 4th of July. We have 4th of July coming up. My episode next week is going to be about some history of the 4th of July. So see you then.